Burlesque by Kamari 333 Chapter 11 Olive Branch Lust sighed in relief, stroking Dance's cheek. It had taken hours of cuddling to get him calmed down enough to go back to sleep. Lust pressed his teeth to Dance's jaw, then pulled away. Dance shivered from the sudden chill his absence left, and Lust quickly tucked the blankets tight around him. He knew it wouldn't be the same. Lust was not unaware of his high body temperature, but it was thankfully enough to let Dance continue to rest. Given the state of his HP, rest was something Dance desperately needed. Lust pulled out his phone, texting Red for his location, praying he hadn't decided to leave. This was definitely not a great way to start their vacation, but surely there was a way to resolve it? Red texted back that he was just giving them space and to let him know when to come back, or if they needed anything. Lust smiled. Red and food would be nice. Lust found his one hand gripping at his hip, the burn having built up after spending so long in close proximity to Dance without getting any special attention. Lust wasn't about to ask Dance for that when he was getting over a nasty panic attack. Stars, no. That would be the worst thing he could do at a time like this. But Red's presence would be a balm. Lust texted Red back to come back but quietly so as not to disturb Dance, and maybe bring food. Lust sat down to wait, hand idly stroking at Dance's skull, his soul aching with worry. Dance hit it so well, Lust had had no idea he was that hurt, that afraid. He should have, he should have noticed. He shouldn't have left them alone. Sooner than he expected, the hotel room door opened, and Red crept inside, three paper bags clutched in one claw. For once, his shoes didn't make even the slightest squeak, and the door closed with utter silence. If Lust hadn't seen it for himself, he never would have known Red had come inside. Red carefully set the bags down on the table, taking extra care not to crinkle the bags. Lust threw himself into Red's chest, hugging him and relaxing. The chilling comfort Red normally exuded was heavily subdued, as though he were holding it back. Lust pressed himself as close as he could get, soaking up every bit of relief he could manage. Red glanced over at Dance, expression unreadable, even for Lust, before guiding Lust to the bathroom and closing the door. Everything I ate? Red asked quietly. Lust looked up at him, swallowing the proverbial lump in his throat. What happened? You two were sleeping soundly, and I got up to get you both something for your hangovers. Then I come back and... Dance's... Red looked away, shrugging. Don't know what to tell you, sweetheart. I was laying there, thinking I had you to myself. Then I looked down, and there's the grease monkey. He looks up at me, and then he fucking shortcuts to the wall, and suddenly there's fucking boss battle music playing like it's a goddamn video game, and he's freaking the fuck out. What were you doing right before he freaked out? Lust asked. Red averted his eyes, face flushing a faint pink color. I was... uh... He brought his hand up, curling his claws gently around Lust's cervical vertebrae, and started stroking, scratching lightly. Thought I was holding ya. Then the sun hit me in the face so I rolled over and was trying to let you know it was okay without having to talk. Was planning on going back to sleep. Then I realized, <laughs> where the fuck's the collar, right? Look down and there's Dance. Lust purred, tilting his head back to invite more of Red's handiwork trilling lightly when he got it, sockets drifting shut. Wish I'd come back sooner, then. Sounds... Lust squirmed, panting softly. He tried to scold himself, remind himself that he had a boyfriend in the other room who needed help, and he should not be getting all hot and bothered thinking about the two of them cuddling like two adorable kittens after a long day of play fighting. Never mind that he was hot and bothered to begin with. God, Lust was so pathetic and gross. Getting himself a date made or two had only made him more needy, not less. Tears of so many different kinds of frustration pricked at the edges of his sockets. Red brushed the little liquid beads away with his other hand, the flat of his thumb sweeping them aside as though to banish them and all they stood for. Hey, none of that shit. He rumbled, voice still soft. Fucker's gonna be fine. Red, I don't even know where to start helping him. Lust lamented. 
and his HP. I don't know how to fix this. He didn't. He really, truly didn't. Red sighed, picking Lust up like he weighed nothing, and sat down on the edge of the bathtub. He made sure Lust was comfortable in his lap, eye light flickering pensively. First step is he's gotta admit he's got a problem. Can't fix what ain't broke, get me? Lust sighed, nuzzling into Red's shoulder. Yeah, but he won't talk to me. Red rolled his eye lights. Of course not. That'd be too fucking easy, stubborn fucker. He growled, clicking his teeth. Lust smiled mischievously, raising a bone brow. Don't tell me you're worried about dance. Red scoffed. Of course not. Don't give two shits. Fucker can rot for all I care. Lust grinned wider, bringing his hand up to cup Red's cheek. Don't worry, you big softy. I won't tell. Red put his hand over Lust. Well, since you're all about changing the subject today, how's about we talk about why you're hot enough to cook an egg on? Lust gulped, soul pounding in his chest. It wasn't fair that Red could talk to him like that while giving him that look, his confident, crooked grin and smoldering eyelight peeking under half-lidded sockets. Completely unfair. Dance shivered as he came to, curling up tighter to try to stave off the chill. He'd never liked being cold. Even though he knew it couldn't hurt him, it was something he had come to associate with loneliness and danger. It was too cold. It shouldn't be this cold. He whimpered softly, terrified if he opened his eyes he'd see the stark, bare walls of his bedroom, underground. It has always been cold there. He didn't want to go back to that again and again and again and... There was a click, then a squeak. The sound of a door opening so soft Dance almost missed it. What he could never miss was the gentle, unhurried approach of someone, the scent of soap and chalk wafting off them, the warmth of them settling on the bed beside him. A gentle, affectionate hand caressed his skull. Dance immediately relaxed, his worry and fear chased away like shadows before the first light of dawn. This kind of warmth could only belong to lust. Dance was still on the surface, he sighed in relief, snuggling closer to the warmth, his arms snaking out to catch Lust around the middle and drag him down. Lust made a soft noise of surprise, but didn't resist, actually moving fluidly to situate himself again on the bed comfortably. Dance, not bothering to open his sockets, pressed his teeth to what ended up being Lust's bare sternum, still damp from the bath he must have taken. He heard Lust's breath hitch, then felt the first oscillations of his contented purring. Sighing happily, Dance settled back down, content to doze, enjoying the moment shared with the monster he adored. Dance felt the first rumbling itch in his own ribcage, and to his muted surprise, he started purring himself, low and stuttered, like tremulous breathing. Guess he's still asleep, Lust whispered, his voice dripping with undeniable affection. One hand cradled the back of Dance's skull, Lust's talented fingertips making soothing circles while the other ran up and down his spine, easing away tension. Dance was so comfortable, he almost didn't notice when Red whispered, I better beat it before he wakes up then. Not wanting to let the two above him know he was eavesdropping, Dance masked his involuntary response by snuggling closer to Lust. Dance couldn't feel any of Red's LV at all. How the hell did he mask it so well? Why was he masking it? It almost made being around him tolerable? You won't leave, will you? Lust asked, the undercurrents of worry hidden in his tone. Nah, I'll be back in the casino, winning back the G that little shark snatched from me. Red reassured. Probably get another room or some shit. Just shoot me a text or something if you need anything. There was a soft clacking noise over Dance's head. Do what you gotta get for your pet, sweetheart. Just remember to eat. I brought you extra, so... Red cleared his throat. Don't let it go to waste, I... Oh, for fuck's sake. Dance opened his sockets, glaring up at Red. It's like you're embarrassed about being nice to people. Red and Lust both froze. Dance looked up at them. Well, I heard something about food. Dance knew he sounded somewhat irritable, his voice rough from sleep and his tone coarse from his anxiety, but he was tired of this. He was so goddamn tired, and he couldn't very well show any more weakness in front of Red. If this was going to work, 
he need to make sure Red at least somewhat respected his status. Don't just stand there, pass it out. Red's face was expressionless. Then he slowly straightened up and walked over to the table where there were three paper bags. Red grabbed one with one hand, then the other two with the other. Red came back, reaching to hand the two bags to Lust. Lust pulled the hand that had been stroking at Dance's skull to accept them. Dance grabbed his arm, pulling it back as he sat up. No, this has got to stop. Lust and Red both gave Dance confused, odd looks. Dance huffed. Babe, you want me and the brute to get along, right? Well then... He took a deep breath, fighting down the acidic taste in his mouth. He hated this. He hated how his bitter rivalry was hurting Lust. He hated how much he hated Red. He hated how hard it was to admit that maybe, just maybe, he might have just possibly overestimated how bad Red really was, just a little bit. But most of all, he hated having to bend when his pride was already so bruised, so broken. Why did Dance always have to be the one to bend over backwards? But he would do anything for lust. I'll... Dance rubbed his sockets. I'll try, I guess, but he... Dance snapped, pointing at Red accusingly, is gonna have to start giving me some common courtesy, and when he wants to be nice, he's gonna have to do it to my face. Dance gave Red a pointed look before holding out his hand. So give it here, asshole. Lust's eyelights grew brighter, more vivid, as a relieved, excited grin split his face. Red, by contrast, had an unreadable look his eye light guttering out as a faint pink crept over his nasal ridge. Dance stared him down, daring him to protest. Red hesitated, and for a moment Dance wondered if maybe he would refuse, as he had so vehemently before. Then, Red slowly placed one of the bags in Dance's hand, carefully uncurling his phalanges from it without losing his grip on the other bag, which he then gave to Lust. There, now is that really so hard? Dance grumbled, scooting over a bit, pulling Lust with him. Now sit down and shut up. Where's the TV remote? Lust flicked his wrist, pulling the remote from the other side of the room with blue magic, happily handing it over to Dance. As Dance started using it to find something to watch, for some odd reason, he was in the mood for a musical, or a western. Wasn't there a western musical? Maybe they had it on pay-per-view. Score! Lust looked up at Red and patted the other side of the bed. Red hesitated again before kicking off his shoes, shucking off his coat, and sitting down. As the movie started, the catchy march about a guy named Bill filling the room, Dance opened the paper bag and pulled out the burger inside. He slathered it in some of the many ketchup packs tucked conveniently, not thoughtfully, of course not, purely coincidentally, in the bottom. He ignored how Red watched him, flickering crimson light trained on him with an intensity Dance would have found uncomfortable if he hadn't been so far past giving a damn. The burger was delicious. Dance stuffed his trash in the bag, balled it up, and tossed it in the general direction of the wastebasket, leaning back to settle more comfortably at Lust's side. As he did, he felt the prickle of LV creep into the room. Dance shot Red a dirty look noting how Red was now avoiding looking at him entirely. Dance might have protested, argued that Red could keep his nasty LV to himself, except this time it felt... different? It wasn't cold. LV was supposed to be cold, but it wasn't cold now. It was warm. Hey everyone, thank you so much for listening. If you liked it, hit the like button to let me know and subscribe to see what I make next. Links in the description lead to the original fic posted on AO3 as well as my Patreon and Ko-fi. If you like my stuff, please consider supporting me. Every little bit helps. Lastly, if you have a request for a recording, whether a one-shot or a series, let me know in the comments. I also do commissions, details of which are on my Patreon. So keep in touch. Bye!